in I will learn to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days it's a very simple song oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you I will ever praise you oh Lord you are my God and I will ever serve you and I, I will always serve you hey I will seek you I will seek you in the morning. Yes, I will learn. I will learn to walk in your ways. For step by step, step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you. God is patient, God is kind, He does not envy, He does not boast, His ways are higher than my own, His thoughts consume the great unknown, of this alone I'm sure. My God is love. Hallelujah. The theme before us today is God's response to the love. And honestly, it's summed up in one thing, love. As, as much as um, it may be, God's response to the lost is love. Hallelujah. One scripture and we will pray. Ephesians 6, 19. Paul was speaking and he said, he was speaking from verse 17, really, and um, 18, and it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And it says, I'm praying for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. There's a difference when we are talking and when there's a communication of the word of God. There are words and words can be spoken. There are seminars, there are presentations, there are all sorts of communication. But when the word of God comes, it must come with that utterance. The transforming power, what really makes the difference, the spirit and the life of God, that whenever we hear God's word, there is an effect, there is a transformation. There is a power behind the word. It's God's word, it's life itself. That the words that we speak, they are spirit and they are life. And they come forth with utterance. And we can pray that the Lord grant that utterance. That the world may become with boldness as we make known this mystery. That our lives be transformed as we hear this word. That it becomes something that is a building block of our lives. That every time we come before God, it's another moment. It's another time to grow. It's another time for more of him to be revealed. It's another time for us to become more like him. It's another time for us to learn Really, every time before God, it's an adventure. Really, we never know what, how he's going to touch us and how he's going to do. But we know one thing. We will be changed for better. And so can we just pray in one minute that, Lord, as we have gathered here today, let your word change me. Father, open my heart. My heart is open to your word. Your word can come forth to my heart. Lord, the door to my heart is open. You don't need to knock. Come in, Jesus, and have your way, have your place. Let your word find root in me. Let your word change my life. Lord, let my life become a testimony of this word. Let me become a living epistle. Lord, let me become a living epistle that my life will live out your word. My life will live out every moment of your word. In the name of Jesus. Just pray in one minute that the word of God, everyone that asketh receiveth. Let my heart be open. Let my heart receive of this word, Lord Jesus. That which you have for me. That which I have to hear. That which I have to hear. Lord, speak to me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we are praying.
because the truth is, God's word, it's not until a scripture comes from here and it touches that a man can be blessed. Right from the opening prayer, the call to worship, from the hymn we started, God has been here, right? He didn't postpone anybody's blessings. Once, once, if we engage God like he's here, we'll always find him like he's here because he is here. Hallelujah. So God's response to the lost. Um, while I was just uh, meditating on this scripture, I remembered a very, very old sermon I heard. And the minister was speaking about another um, very, very old time. I don't even remember the name exactly. But he said something. He said, um, if I can get a man to think just for five minutes of his soul, I can get that man saved. And when I heard at that time, a very long time ago, I, I re- and I really didn't get it. You know, it's just one of the things you say, and you say, hmm, deep stuff, hmm, hmm, word. And you just move on. But then I realized that the truth is, Scripture says he has put eternity in the heart of man, right? And the truth is, configured in the heart of every man, every man has a spirit, and spirit will always bear witness with spirit. God is always calling. I like, this, I like this picture of God calling. That God is always calling. And if we can truly quiet the noise. The world is so noisy. Around us is always so noisy. You find that whenever we come and we, really, we find out that we can hear God. We find out that God is speaking. God has been speaking. We find out that we have peace. But there is so much noise and there is so much distraction. If we can really quiet in our spirit and in our souls. We find out that truly... There is, there is something in us calling for more. There's something in us crying for more. That, that God is real and there is so much he wants to do in and through our lives. So God's response to the lost. I, I just want to, really there is, there, the burden of my heart for this message is in the second part. But there, um, there are just two major points I would like us to look at today. And number one is what is God's response to the lost? And how does he respond? How does he carry out this response? We've read um, today, and I'm sure that um, I would really, I would have loved to, you know, take a lot of opinions and just let us share amongst ourselves. But we, we are pressed for time today. And when we talk about this response, we find all through scripture and very, so much beautiful in Jesus I always say that I love the Gospels. I love epistles. I love the writings of Paul. They are very deep mysteries. But I just love Jesus. There's a way when, especially when you read the Gospel of John, there's a way Jesus is revealed. That it's just, it's really beautiful. He really came and he lived this earth. I saw a meme recently and it was about, um, it was like an argument, an atheist. And so he was asked, um, when was, I think they asked him when the will, so the man didn't believe in God, right? He didn't believe in Jesus. So they asked him, when was the will invented? And he said, very proud and arrogant, he said, 3,000 BC. And said, before whom? Before Christ. Thank you, that's all. I rest my case. But really, the, the, the point is that it's evident all around us that God is constantly pursuing us. God is constantly revealing himself, and he just wants for all to know. And that's the number one response. I, 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 I wrote it here as passionate pursuit. God's number one response to the lost, I, 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 I wrote it here as passionate pursuit. That there's a passion, it's not just pursuing, there's a passionate pursuit. The a way God wants to bring every soul and everyone to this redeeming work of Christ. And if we look at Luke, let's quickly look at Luke 15. Luke 15 and verse 4. Let's look at Luke 15 verse 4. Thank you. He said, what man of you having an hundred sheep? If you lose one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. Notice that he said he leaves the 99 for the one. It's, it's, that, it's that serious. These ones are saved already. He said he leaves the 99 for that one. Go after that which is lost until he finds it. That's not even where I'm going. The next verse. And when he has found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing. Rejoicing. There is such a joy. For that one that really, I mean, they'll tell us that what of the risk, what if the 99, some escaped and all, but for that one that was lost, he's willing and he's ready to pursue that one, no matter how lost. That is reckless love. It almost seems reckless that he's ready to leave that which is and go after. And the truth is, 
I, I began to study, and recently I've been communicating, especially whenever I had the chance to speak to people, that really we find that we, we might need to redefine how we view, view God and, and the relationship with sinners, in quotes, that this is someone who is pursuing. This doesn't look like someone who is hateful and angry to me. This looks like someone who is loving and wants to save one that is lost. And that if God is not hating someone, who am I to be hating on that person? If God is not judging someone, who am I to not be judging? So that is, is someone who is passionately pursuing the lost. Let's go to Luke 19. Luke 19 and verse 10. Same in Luke 15, we see the parable of the lost coin as well. It's amazing that God will use something so valuable as silver to qualify those that were lost, in quote. This is Jesus speaking here. He says, for the Son of Man is come to seek, not just to save. It's come to seek and to save that which was lost. It will take the pain to find them. That's, that's the emphasis here. It will take the pain to find those that are lost and he will save them. So really, God is responding and his, his response is one of passion, is one of of love is one of, of of a God that wants to save a one God that wants to see that none perish but that all come to eternal life amen and the good part the really for me the the sweet part of all this is that he has made the provision it's not a matter of come and I will save you it is come and you are saved because the provision is made already for salvation and it's not just till Jesus came. We found out that the Lamb has been slain from what? From the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 8. Right? We find out that the Lamb was actually slain from the foundation of the world. And John 3, 16. I love that scripture. As popular as it is, um, it's amazing how many of the simple things are... Uh, that scripture is complete. For God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son. And that whosoever... You know, it's built, it's, it, whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's, it's no longer a question of um, whether God wants to. The question of whether God wants to or not, it's not even a question. It's not even a question of, um, can this, it's not a question. God wants to. It's clear all through scripture. It's, it's, not, it's not the idea of a man. It's, it's communicated all through the life of Jesus. We see something in Jesus that, I find it funny that just a few months after Jesus died, we still see so many sick people in Jerusalem, so many sick people that the apostles had work. No one, did I just realize that I feel like, wait, oh, so that means Jesus didn't heal everybody. But we have a record here in scripture that says that you will find that there was nobody that went to Jesus that was, that was not saved. Do you realize that there was nobody that actually approached Jesus? There was nobody that responded to his words. There was no one person that Jesus did not pay attention to, that Jesus did not heal or did not answer their questions. It's amazing that the, 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 uh, the man that could save Save the world was walking the streets. And I can imagine some Jews there, like, oh, Jesus, yeah, that carpenter's son. Peace, shalom. And you know, and they move on. And somebody else's life was saved, changed radically. Ordinary fisherman became a great apostle just because of response. So the first question to us is how are we responding to God's love and to God's call? And how are we, how are we showing that response to the world? Amen. The second uh, point I would like to note is that God forgives. The response is one of forgiveness, loving forgiveness. And there's a difference. I learned that there's a difference between the way God forgives and the way we might view forgiveness. God forgives on a clean slate. I had, I used to be very angry and I, I um, maybe holding grudges and one day I was meditating and the, the, I, I, I literally had the Holy Spirit say that. Is that how I forgive you? And you know, scripture started welling in and I realized truly, when we think about it, when God says, forgive as I have forgiven you, how did he forgive? See, many of the times I've, I find out our reaction to life is because we really don't, when we, we know we should react from God's standpoint, but we really don't understand God's standpoint. We might say we do, but when we really understand that this is how God forgives, this is how God expects me to forgive my brother, I will not come and say, that's how, that's how you did yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how you always do. But she might share money. But she might share now. If you have a boy, let's leave him. He cannot. That guy can't change, Jerry. It's a hopeless cause. Really, and although sometimes we do not say it exactly, our actions, our, our language, our communications, they show these things. 
really. And we find out that, let's, let's see Isaiah 43 verse 5. This is Old Testament now, Isaiah 43 verse 25. Isaiah 43, 25. Please project it for so everyone can see. It. He said, I, even I, the Lord speaking here, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. This is the omniscient God that never forgets it. He said, me, oh, see, I will go to the memory, where the memory is, pull it out. I like the place I said, it cast it into the ocean. That is not to be remembered. And a, a good point is, if God will not remember my sins, who am I to be letting the sin kill me with guilt and with blame? You know more than God. Are you more powerful than God? If the omniscient God says, I will not remember. Once I'm forgiven. Any, so I know that anything that is trying to bring back my old thoughts and sins. Uh, devil, I see you. I see you. I know it's you. Thank you. Eh? And really, it's, it's because it says, I am he that blotteth out thy transgression. This is Isaiah. This is Old Testament. And it says, I am he that remembers not thy sins. Second Corinthians 5.17. We know this word. For any man be, if any man be in Christ, he's what? He's a new creature. How new? That's the question. How new? It's brand new. Since he changed me, I'll never be the same. Since he changed me, I will never be the same. All things are passed away. All things are new. I'm not the same. That's the truth. All things are passed away. How new? It's totally brand new. Like a clean slate. It's totally brand new. Your spirit is reborn. And if that man's spirit is reborn, we understand that the spirit is, um, has what now? The, where we commune with God, uh, where we know God in our spirit. And that the spirit is the real man, right? So the spirit is reborn. The conscience is washed with the blood of Jesus. All these things are shown in scriptures. There is no more condemnation for this person. Hallelujah. I was asked the question again. Who am I to condemn that person? Who am I to condemn him who Christ has washed with his blood? I think for, that's the burden for me. When I, when I, when I got the uh, message of this, and I saw the title, honestly, I think Victor was there, I laughed because it had been what I've been shouting since that can we love like Jesus loved? Can we really love like God? I feel the world would be a much better, much better place, really. I, I, it's going to be beautiful if everyone loved the way Jesus loved. It's hard, really, and we'll get there. It, 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 it might seem tough, but we have all the power of heaven behind us, right? So we can do it. Amen. John 8, 11, last. Let's look at the last scripture there. John 8, 11. John, Gospel of John, please. 8, 11. Okay, I'll read. Let's open our scriptures. Okay. And this is the story of um, the woman caught in the act of adultery. I don't think it gets more worse than getting caught in the act. I think that's red and dead. And like, like they always ask, it's funny, we don't see the man here. It takes two to tango, right? And we don't, it's, 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 and you know, they had gone through all the emotions and everything, and they came, said, Jesus, we caught this woman in the act. The Lord says we should stone her. Let, let, let's end her. And funny enough, it's amazing because I don't think catching someone in the act of the adultery, uh, in the act of adultery is something that you can maybe plan or something that I'm, I, I'm seeing here that this one was exposed for the sole reason of these people hating Jesus realize they, they wanted to use this to actually catch Jesus to actually like implicate him that was the only it's not as if they cared about the law it's amazing that one can be so religious and you can see that ah, these people are fervent for Jesus they are fervent for God but they can use that position of God to wreck somebody else's life it's amazing this, this life is beautiful though I was, I was sharing with my friends. I, had to, I was at Lagos one week and we were laughing. We were like, this end time, I've been seeing this like super story. And I'm like, this thing's happening in real life, fool. This thing's happened. And but Jesus bows down. Jesus writes on the floor. And when they disturb him and disturb him, he just said, ah, any of you that is without sin, cast the first stone. I love that part. He said, one by one, from the eldest to the least. Um, and they began to live one by one until 
Because every man was convicted in his own heart of his own sin. And it also goes to prove that that sin is in everyone that Jesus has not washed. Everyone that Jesus has not washed. We are equal. Oh man, oh, he said, in sin my mother conceived me. So without Jesus, without that, it, we, uh, no matter the status, no matter what the person may have done, it, it, it's not about a big sin. It's not about, it's not about the sin, the act, that nature in man. No matter how nice that person that could have been, without Jesus, that person is still a condemned man. And that's the truth. And Jesus says, verse 11, she said, and Jesus asked him that, woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. I tell you, if somebody had accused that, Jesus would have still gotten out of that situation. Because the point was to prove that he didn't condemn her. I said, neither do I condemn you. He said what? But go and sin no more. You are not condemned. Go and sin no more. Don't do that again. Hallelujah. It's amazing when we, when we really... Um, it took a lot of time um, to really delve into the Gospels because for me, I, I, I got to a stage, I wanted to really see how... I wanted to know... I hear about WWJD. What would Jesus do? Really, what would he do? Because some, the way my... my sorry, I've lived, I've lived here all my life, right? So my culture has shaped my worldview. It's amazing the way... I, I saw a tweet recently and I was... I, I, I said to you, I was like, hmm, I like this. And the person said something. He said, um, we're talking about doctrines and we're talking about how that if the doctrine can't be in every... Um, every like branch of that ministry that then obviously something might be wrong. And I thought about it and I said, really? Because we find out that it's the same faith, right? I mean, it's the same. So we should, everywhere we go... We, there should be that commodity. Now, we have different cultures that we cannot do away with, really. But there should be something that is clear that can unify us. That, ah, no, no, no. There's a kind of love that exudes from these people because our God is love. That's how he's described. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a nature around these people. There's, there's, there's... This might... But you will This person is a Christian. Ah, no, this person is a Christian. I think I've said before, I, I, I especially love it when... And me, normally, I don't dress... I don't dress like this... <laughs> Trust me. If you saw me, if you saw me on the street on the normal day, I probably in a hood, and I don't. And I like it. It, it. it strikes me when I'm on the bike and I'm getting down the bike, and I'll be like, Pastor Ekbelio, and I'm like, ah. I don't look the part. What gave me off? I didn't talk on the bike. What gave me off? But really, we we realize that really there should be more than just even without words. There is, there should be a presence we carry because we are not alone. We say these things a lot, but when we realize the implication, we find out we are not alone. No. Ah, we are not alone. And it's beautiful when we see the reality of these things. Amen. I'd like to also add that this is um, a door that is always open. The door of salvation is a door that is always open. I always, whenever, I always just say that it's simple. If you are alive, the door is open. It's simple. As long as there is life, there is hope. As long as the person is alive, it's proof that in this side of eternity, there's still this chance. It's not just about a second chance. So many second chances have been blown. <laughs> but that the point is, the door is always open. Don't, they, 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 the, the, the fear, all those. If we bring the, um, the story of the prodigal son into our context here, someone that took all his um, father's living, his... Um, inheritance from his father, spent it all on riotous living, now came back. No, 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 we'll take him back, oh, but we'll first flog life out of him. It's very important. The disciplining part is very important. We will first flog life out of him. We will throw a party for him. <laughs> Maybe after we flog him, if that is like, I'll beat you and by myself, I'll take you to the hospital. It's, when I hear things like, I'm like, oh, you beat the person. And, he, that's, and that's, that's a kind of love. But, but, God shows up and, and, and shows his kind of love. And he says he welcomes him back. He welcomes the child back. He kills the fatted calf. If we read through, we say the fatted calf is, is it's kept for special occasions. That calf they killed for the, the guy that ran off. And you know, the other brother was, I, I, I feel his pain. But the father said, should we not rejoice? Is it not a good thing? Is it not my will? Is this not what we are praying for? 
That it will all be good. So the, it's a door that is always open. And we see this in, let, let's just look through Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3. I'd like to establish all this um, in God's word. Hebrews 3, let's start from verse, from verse 7, okay? Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, verse 8 now, in the wilderness. And then, uh, let's just jump to verse 13. It says, and this is actually where I'm going. It's the verse 13. It says, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin, the deceitfulness of sin that, ah, uh, nothing is going on. It's all good. Nothing is going on. It can harden a man's heart to the grace of God. It says, exhort one another. Now, here, he says, exhort one another daily, while it is called today. That today is an eternal today. Every day is today the day of salvation. As long as you respond. Every day, every second, every moment. And that's why any man can get saved anywhere once you believe. It's beautiful. Um, 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. I'm rounding up now. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. It says, We then as workers we, together with him beseech you that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Next verse. For he said, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I God thee. Behold, when is the accepted time? Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. That daily, that today is now. It's not about tomorrow. It's not about next tomorrow. It's not about yet whatever happened before. Now, whenever the call is heard, whenever the, 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 the heart of God is felt, really, that time can be a salvation. It's all that it requires is a response. I found a verse in Proverbs and it changed my life. It said, um, I will hear you when, you when you turn unto me and hear my words, then will I. And it says that first you must pay attention and then God will respond. That All the man has to do is respond. God has been calling. He is calling. No more is required but response. Amen. And this is it for me. And this, this really is the heart of, I feel this is the heart of this message for me that how will God respond to these lost people? How does he carry this response out? We've heard of God's heart and everything, but how does God reject? God is in heaven, right? And he's here, yes, he's omnipresent. But how does he reach out to these people? Acts 1.8. Let's look at Acts 1.8. That God has left his entirety, God has given me as a believer the authority to represent and misrepresent him. That he just gave us the authority. So whenever God is being bad mouthed anyway, I see it as a stain, not on God, it's on me because we are the ones representing him. He said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what is the essence is that ye shall be witnesses unto me. You become the proof of my existence. You become the proof of my claims. That everywhere you are, you become the proof that my love is real. That we have not seen God before, but Jesus came as the firstborn from the dead. And Jesus came and he said that, okay, God is love. You've heard it now. This, this is it. You can touch and you can feel me. You can behold the glory of God. The glory is the only because of the Father. Still full of grace and truth. That we can be his witnesses. Both in Jerusalem and Judea and to the uttermost part. So it's, it's not a set of people. It's everyone. That when we receive the Holy Ghost, when we get born again, the whole idea is that we become witnesses. We become the ones to which God responds to the lost. The lost will be lost until myself and you, we respond to them. Because God will reach out to them through me. As I prepared for this, my heart burned. I said, ah, I, I, we need to rekindle this fire of evangelism. This fire of reaching out to lost people. This fire of just nabbing people on the board. This fire of, we go to the cinema, you see a, a, a gang of young people. Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? How are you? I will get one people, one or two people saved. Get one person filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a good day to go home and we're happy and we see our movie and we go home. It's a good day. Let's take Jesus out on the streets. They won't come to church now. I was taught one day when I, um, we, were, we, we were, we have an evangelism and we were, and, and uh, this young, I just approached young and we were talking and I realized that, ah, there's no way this guy will enter any other church now if they don't reach him in places like this. And I just realized that truly, Truly, we, we, it's, not for, it's not something I, mean, I keep and I wait until the day I'm going to be raptured and then I'm like, this is my ticket to heaven and we go to heaven. While we are here, right here, right now, 
we must reach out to these people. We must respond to them as God would. So I must love people the way God would love them because I learned that that's how he responds. So I learned how does God respond. That's how we discuss. It's not, it's not about condemnation. It's not about looking down on people. It's not about, it's not about bringing up all their faults and, and misdeeds. But truly that, this is how Jesus did it too. And this is the love of God. And I am his witness. I am that living epistle. I want to be misrepresenting. You cannot represent one you don't know. So I must know him. My life must prove him. My life must be a proof that he exists, is real, and his love is real. My life must evidence that Christ died. My life must evidence that purity is real. My relationship with people must evidence that purity is real. My relationship with people must evidence that, that, that the grace of God is real. That people look at their life and say, this, this, is, this is different than a normal man. That people can look at us and they say, that truly, these ones are Christ's own. These ones are Christians. That the way I walk, the way I do my work, the way I move, the way I talk, just even normal conversations. Normal conversations that people can begin to feel the love of God and people can begin to know that truly, if this is real, God's love must be real. God's love must be real and people can come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Now it is true myself and you that God reaches out to these lost people. We are his, we are his emissaries. We are the ones through which he ministers to these people on the earth. Amen. So the, 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 the ball is now in our court and we must gear up. We must take this response out there. We must, we must this week and beyond, we must make it a point of our lives that, that people can feel God. Whenever people, whenever, because the truth is, whenever people say that God is not real, whenever people say that um, God didn't answer me, whenever people say that um, maybe they've, they've missed God or maybe they are lost or something, God just, when people are the truth, when people are looking for God, really, God points at the earth and says that, look at me now. I'm there. I'm there. There I am. He points at Fumini and says, that, ah, that's Fumini now. When in Fumini's area, people have been terrorized day and night by all sorts of weird dreams and funny things. I'm going to say, ah, I'm there now. It, it, I'm there. It shouldn't be, right? When, when, whenever those things, they should be, we should become like, like pot house that bring heaven to earth. Because that's how Jesus came to die. Jesus gave, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's within reach. If you see me, you've seen the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is not in meat and drink, right? But in righteousness, joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. And we carry this Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the truth is, these are only the people that have already been saved. So let's start there. If we are here today and we know truly that when it comes to this salvation thing, ah, we are not sure or I have not been saved before. I have not given my life to Christ. I want us in just one minute, one, two minutes. If you want to close your eyes, if you, however, but let your heart connect with God in this moment and hear him and just surrender your life to him. In your own words, talk to him. Just express yourself to him that, Lord, this is me, oh. They said we should come. They said the door is open and I have come. That Lord, you can hear me. You can save me. You can deliver me. Lord, this is the problem. I've heard of all that you've done. I've heard of all that you've made ready for me. They said that there's a feast prepared for me. That Lord, if I come, all I have to do is come. Lord, I have come. I have responded. This is me responding to the call. This is me responding to the call, Lord Jesus. The Father, save me. Spirit of the living God, come into my life. Awaken my spirit. Lord, forgive all my sins. Forgive all my sins and iniquities. Cleanse me by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Wash me anew and make me your child. For as many as are born by you, they have received the power to become children of God. I am a child of God. I am who you say I am. You call me blessed. You call me redeemed. You call me sanctified. You call me justified. I live above sin. I live above the world. Hallelujah. Can we just rise up on our feet? And in the next one, two minutes, I want us to just pray. I want us to pray for our family, our friends, those who we know that they really need Christ. Those we know that, those situations that we know that they really need Christ. In the next one, two minutes, let's just intercede for them. Let's intercede for our families, for our loved ones, for our friends, for all these people, our colleagues. Because the truth is beyond here, without Jesus, our intercession goes a long way. Without Jesus, they will not be saved. Can we just 
mention their names if you have to. You can write down their names. You can, the Lord Jesus, save this one. Father, save this one. Save this one. Save this one. In the name of Jesus, find men. Find me useful. Find me an instrument, Lord, that you can use. Make me an instrument, Lord Jesus. Lord, touch my family. Lord, look at this problem. Lord, look at this problem. Your hand is, is this problem is nothing before you. So I bring it before you. I exalt my God. The Father, let this problem, let it be gone. Lord, I come against this problem by the power of the kingdom of God. Scripture says that if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God is revealed unto you. That every time the kingdom of God comes, darkness must flee. Father, in this situation, Lord, let your kingdom be manifest. Lord, in this situation, let your kingdom be manifest. In this life, let your kingdom be manifest. Lord, in this region, let your kingdom be manifest. In our country, let your kingdom be manifest. Let it be evident that truly there are people in this land that truly... Truly, the power of God roams this land. That truly, God is moving amongst His people. Can we just pray in the next one minute? Manda kabrado shi gete braste velagadash. Manda kabrado shi gete gete. Barada bakadash shi brado gada bagade brando ste vegete. Manda gabala gade bosh. Father, in the name of Jesus, my family will be a household of faith. Lord, my neighborhood will be one of faith. My family, my mem- the family members, my relatives. There will be people of faith. Lord, they will come, Lord Jesus. Lord, on that day, when we get to heaven, Lord, we will not stand alone. Every one of us will stand with souls we are brought to Christ. Every one of us will bring joy to heaven. We will bring joy and rejoice into heaven. Our lives will be testimonies that people can look at and by which they can come to Christ. Our nation, because of us, because of our strategic placement in this country, the nation will receive a turn around. In the name of Jesus, God will begin to raise us as men. He will begin to raise women that will be mighty battle axes for him. In the name of Jesus. Manda kabro si breste vela gedai. Shi gete gete bakata bronste velante. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you are doing, Lord. Thank you, Father, because of change. Thank you, Father, because of lives you are transforming. Thank you, Father, because of transformation. Thank you, Father, because of change and shifts. Thank you, because mindsets are being shifted and minds are being renewed. Thank you, Father, because our minds are renewed. We begin to think like you. We behave like you. Father, we become those people. We become those people. Lord Jesus, that you can truly say that I know my servant. I know my servants. I know my sons and daughters. Father, truly let this be our testimony. That Lord, on that final day, we will stand with those we have brought to you. We will not stand alone. Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity to represent you. We will not misrepresent you. Father, you will give us the grace. You will help us to wait on you. Lord, we will wait on you. We will know you. We will reveal you as you are to this world. Lord, this dying world will receive your life through us. We become those people through which your life can find expressions. The channels of your spirit can flow out through us, Lord Jesus. Wherever we are, whenever. Lord, we don't need to talk too much. Because we are not alone. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for our nation. Thank you because we know, Lord, that you are on your throne. And we know, Father, that you are staring in our hearts. Lord, you are giving men direction. We receive our own mandate. We receive our own part to play. We will not sit idle. Lord Jesus, we take the charge. We take the charge, Lord. And we move in your direction as you lead. Father, this nation will know your ways. Lord, this land will know your ways. This nation will know the love of God. This nation will know your peace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all you have done and all that we have received. We are truly grateful. We love you, Lord, and we'll continue to love you more. In Jesus' name we pray.